Okay, let's get punching. We've got our monk's cloth and our cue snap and we are all threaded up and we are ready to go. Exciting. We need to unravel some of the yarn from our ball so that we don't get all caught up when we're stitching. Let's move everything else out of the way. <gasps> Very exciting. Let's get going. Okay. So basically, you're holding your punch needle. This is the Oxford. Poke it in the first hole as a starting point. You can reach to the back and just pull that little thread through and that'll make it nice and neat. And then we're off. Okay, holding it with the groove facing you for the Oxford because that's going to keep you in the right direction. Lifting it up till just the very tip of the metal is showing. Just skims the fabric and then we're going to push it in again right right up until the wooden handle okay let's do that again so we're lifting it up and we're going in one direction so we're always facing the direction that we are going so do another stitch Get the swing of it. You'll see I keep my little finger there. Somehow that keeps me in line. You'll find your own technique that works for you. So, so we're going in a straight-ish line and taking your time to begin with. Just do a few stitches and see how you go. Get the feel of it. Making sure you're pushing it all the way through each time till it hits the wooden handle and you'll get into a rhythm and so there we've got a few flat stitches so these are flat stitches if we flip it over you will see on the other side magically you've got fluffy stitches and they're really just being held together because they're squished together a bit like magic really so flat versus fluffy Do a few more. Get to the swing of it. Now I'm not really putting it in any individual hole. In monk's cloth, you can put it in a hole or even through the the fibres of the fabric because it's that flexible. So you don't have to be too particular stopping to, to look to put it in a hole. You can actually punch it anywhere, which is why it's so great as a starting cloth. Okay, shall we change direction? We're going to go to the left now. Okay, so you're going to turn it while it is still in the fabric and then do your stitch because you're always stitching in the direction you are going. We're turning again, but I'm actually going to flip the whole Q-snip frame around because that's the way I prefer to go. And then you're going in this direction again. That way you're not getting your yarn tangled. If you were trying to punch with it the other way, it would just all your stitches would be falling out. So we're putting one row close to the first row, but not on top of it, just pretty close by. And if you're using flat stitches as your finished piece, you want to make those nice and neat so there's no white gaps of fabric showing. But if you flip over and you're doing fluffy, you don't have to be quite so neat because all the, the fluffy ones sort of squish together and it's a bit more forgiving so we're going to keep stitching and then we're going to practice changing direction again to get to the end turning it while it's still in the fabric doing a stitch turning it so it's still in the fabric and then we're off to doing another row so we'll be getting into the swing of it by now Okay, so it's good to spend time practicing this before you launch into any great project, just to get your technique right, just so it doesn't feel so foreign. Okay, we're doing another one. Excellent. 
and then you might get some times where your stitches become loose for some reason or they're not sitting right then you can actually just pull out your needle and then just pull on the end of your thread to get you back to where you were so you've pulled your thread and then just keep punching again and you will actually find that you won't even notice so this is good that means you don't have to snip your thread and start again you can just let's just unpick let's unpick and have a little look so you can unpick the whole thing keep it threaded on your punch needle and then just pull your yarn back through so you can totally reuse your yarn again and you've got some holes in your fabric but fear not this is why monk's cloth is miraculous grab another punch needle and just gently using the tip we're just going to jab it back into place we're just going to ease it gently you're never going to get it perfectly back but you're just going to ease those um, fibers up in both directions and you're going to get it back into place and then you can literally start punching again over the top which is great so this is great when you're practicing you can just use the same piece of cloth to keep practicing practicing right we're going to use the adjustable which you remember we need the threader for that one and off screen I'm just licking the end of my yarn as we do sometimes and then sometimes you might just need to snip the end if it's being difficult which this one is snip the end and then we're going to look at it again so we're doing it off camera <laughs> all the tricks and teaching you all the tips you need right okay so let's so this is the adjustable one I'm going to set it to A, which is the super long polling, to show you how cool it is. And then we'll start punching with this one. Just in the same spot we were punching before to show you how well the fabric um, lasts while you keep doing this. So same technique as the Oxford. You are going in the direction, aiming at the direction you are punching. Um, it doesn't have the groove to show you which side is up. So you sort of just have to get used to this one and just make sure when it's popping up it's in the, in the right place. I find this one works really well. I'm going over two stitches here and it makes a really nice even. And then you scooch it over and look at that lovely tall pile. Isn't that fabulous? That is really cool. I love this. Okay, and change direction. So I'm making sure, usually the adjustable bit is on the back. And so making sure you're in the right direction. So when you pull it up, that little beveled bit should always be showing. That means you've got it the right side up. And that's the way it should go each time. So lifting it up, changing direction it down and again turning it again and we're doing a, another row so when you've got it longer it takes a slightly different technique to keep it just poking out and no more you can see I've got my little finger out again that's obviously my technique just sort of hold it in place right so there's a couple of rows of that right and then grab your thread from the other side give it a snip can't do the old left-handed snip so let's do the right that's better okay look at that isn't that cool two rows versus two rows of flat uh, let's pop it down to C which is a slightly smaller piling then we'll go side by side and we'll see what that does again pulling it through at the back that just makes it nice and neat and from the front just the same you can see I haven't sped it up here this is how fast I'm going this is how fast you can go once you get into the groove 
just so cool. It's like colouring in, it really is. It's just like colouring in with yarn, super fast once you get the hang of it. Changing direction again. Now here, you can see I'm, my yarn's tugging and that can undo stitches. So always make sure you've got a bit of slack. So make sure you unroll a bit so you've got some slack. Otherwise, if you get caught up, it will pull your stitches out. We'll carry on. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see, but it's slightly shorter in pile length, that one. We're going to give it a bit of a chop in a little bit. Uh, I'll chop there. And we will go down to C, which is even a little bit shorter again. We'll do rub that, and then you'll see how we can sculpt it at the end, which is really fun. This is what I like about the adjustable. You see you've got these three different pile lengths all in one needle and you can easily change even while you've still got your yarn threaded. So although it's a bit fiddly to, to thread in the beginning, once you've got your ball of yarn on there, you're away. And you can chop and change the levels while your yarn is still threaded. Okay, so we'll do this row. And then we're going to have a little look-see. Okay, do a snip, and how cool is that? Look at that pile length. So flat on that side, super fluffy on this side. Okay, so you can start snip, snip, snipping. Now. Your yarn is not going to fall out when you start snipping. It is so jammed in there, like magic, that you're not going to lose any stitches. So don't be scared. That's why it's good to have fun and experiment in the beginning to see what you can actually do. So clean up these threads and you can snip the individual loops or you can leave the loops if you like that look. And then you can get in there and you can snip, snip, snip. And you can have a really good play. And you can get different layers. Make sure you've got some nice, sharp little little scissors. You can get some shaped scissors, which are perfect for this. They've sort of got just the right angle to get in there and make great shapes. So you can imagine how much fun you can have on a larger scale doing this. Um, you can create all sorts of texture. Cool. You do make a mess. <laughs> You'll get little bits of fluff everywhere. But that's half the fun. So look at that. Isn't that fun? So you can just you can keep snip snip snipping all you like. And so you've made like a little little texture, but about like as flat as anything on the back. It just shows you the versatility of what you can do with a punch needle. But and but look, it's firm as anything. I've I've snipped it, but it's still solidly in place. So you don't have to worry about anything coming out. In fact, now as I try and unpick it you'll see actually just how difficult it, it is once you've snipped to unpick it um, but it's worth doing because you can absolutely use your fabric this will be the third time I've punched on the top of this this one place in the fabric so it shows you you pay a bit more for monk's cloth but it's totally totally worth it when you want to practice because you only need one piece of fabric to practice on I'm going to transfer this fabric once I've unpicked my mess here we're actually going to transfer to a hoop and do an actual design and you'll see how I can just reuse this the same piece again and you'll never ever see it because we're going to cover all the fabric with our entire design as I keep pulling you might need to cut some <laughs> fun times pick 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 um, but like I said, it's totally worth it. Never ever waste. If you've made a mistake, just unpick it because it does. It takes a few minutes, but it's totally worth it to reuse your fabric again. If you're using hessian or something, uh, burlap, jute, whatever you like to call it, you probably aren't going to be able to reuse it that well because your fibres are going to be broken. Okay, there's that last little bit. And we're going to 
tweak it back together again with the tip tweak 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 and look what's this is the third time I've done this spot and look it is still going back into place easy peasy easy peasy which is wonderful all right there we go I'm going to transfer this to Hope and we're going to stitch a pattern. Yay, I can't wait.